Hoods up again, ladies and gentlemen, and you know what this means. It's time for carburetor rebuild. Look at that precious shiny. I had this truck running good for a day and a half, and you know, I adjusted the valves in it, new spark plugs, new, new distributor with that vacuum advance on it. And now it's back to its same old bull. Uh, yeah, 30 miles an hour over passes in third gear. It's kind of miserable, so. Next, we're rebuilding the carburetor and we're gonna replace all the vacuum lines in here. Uh-oh, stinky. Turns out all it was was a freaking PCB one. Anyhow, first thing I'm gonna do is connect this battery terminal and the, and the black is positive and the red is, is negative, you know, which is cool and good and I'm, I'm glad that they decided to do that. Uh, whoever rewired this was, you know, smart. Anyways, the people who uh, tried to get a jump from me hooked it on backwards, and I might have fried their computer if it wasn't for the car being running, but... <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to start by taking this wing nut off. Get back in there. I'm going to clear out a space in the bed for all of these different components. Put them in there. And just, uh... got to grab some tools out first. Do these little clamps. Two, three, and this back one is a bear to get off. That godforsaken PCV line. And you can rotate this around usually. Lose the wing nut, of course, but uh, pop it out of there. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a ice and Toyota two barrel carburetor. Have a look down her throat hole. Tap the gas pedal once and it'll go to the high idle position. Anyhow, yeah. smoked a bowl, so I'm a little fucked, but. <clears throat> We're doing this Saturday afternoon and it's just, just gorgeous outside. And there's the Sadies. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna really hurt. Alright, the next thing you're going to want to do is loosen these two nuts. Uh, 12 millimeter. I got an extension. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, oh, Big Daddy. Want, want to be in my YouTube video? Yeah. Okay. And, uh... Fort's getting it. Uh, yeah, I think it's just those two nuts. Oh, God. Really being intoxicated is the only way to work on your own vehicles outside when it's 30 degrees because otherwise it's just miserable. There's nothing to numb cold anger to just not being able to get something apart, you know? Pretty lit. I just went through and deleted like 130 videos from my YouTube channel because, or my, uh, my uh, phone rather, so I can have space to make this video because I, I wouldn't otherwise. The next thing you're going to want to do is I think grab like an 8mm, maybe a 10mm and undo that. And you can try to get these clamps off, but I don't think you're getting them back on. I would just recommend, you know, grab, grab them out. Always something good in store with the formed. <laughs> God bless carbureted vehicles. Alright, my hand's cold. The next thing you're going to want to do is disconnect your preheater for your air filter and carburetor assembly. A vacuum line hooking into a vacuum supply over here to your, I think, part of your automatic choke system. Uh, and a vacuum line on the back here that regulates the amount of hot air going up to the intake and this line. I can get it off. God bless America. Ah. Okay, now y'all may not have it, but this is the OEM Toyota service manual. It's got a red cover, says Toyota on it. I ordered it off of eBay for oh, 
dollars, I think. Hmm, <laughs> sick about shipping. Anyways, I'm on fuel system page number four. Has the diet number five is the beginning. So, uh, yeah. Disassembly. Well, I think it's just one page. There's a lot more vacuum lines on that than I was thinking for just one page. So, oh, putting this back together is going to hurt. The way that I always do this two-handed is move this guy back, pop this cable forward, and then get this little lead weight out of here. Have to uh, disconnect your accelerator linkage. And if you're going to take the valve cover off, note the position of those two nuts so you don't have to screw with the uh, throttle cable later on. Other than that, we're going to be disconnecting everything connected to the carburetor uh, body. Mm. There's going to be a couple fuel lines we have to lead off here and uh, some, some clipped in stuff, but I think it's going to be relatively simple. This is four. Should be four. Uh, yeah, nuts. There's one down in there. Where is it? I probably can't see it. I'm looking with you. That's okay. Anyhow, there's going to be a few nuts. Oh, I see where it's hiding. So it's this one. That one. And then there's another one back in there. Yeah, great. I'm gonna get everything off to get to those. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab a blue rag and set it underneath of this here uh, fuel intake line. And I'm also gonna take this uh, temperature sensor, single wire temp sensor out of the uh, engine so I don't mess that up. Just make it easier for me to get at this with a pair of fingers and a, a rag. And then my mind might actually, uh, I'm lucky. That's normal. There's gonna be a lot of fuel coming out of this, I have a feeling. Which is okay, but still. Try not to get any in the, uh, who's a watch it temperature sensor, eh? There we go. Almost nothing. Maybe that's why it's so damn hard to start after a few days. Ugh. It's chilly out. You're gonna go with me and disconnect all the lines to the carburetor. Shit. I'm trying to bust them is what I'm trying to do. Well, I should replace them all anyways. There you go, now you're looking at it. Don't do drugs, kids. It's bad for you. Well, I'm gonna disconnect this vacuum one, and this one, and this one. Then, nope, not that one. No need to disconnect that uh, BCV line. This charcoal canister line needs to be disconnected. I think fuel shut off solenoid, or maybe a uh, electronic choke. I don't know these carburetors, so I'll get into it. Um, any of these little vacuum or electrical lines headed to the back. If there's anything that I missed, any of these three vacuum ones, nothing coming off this junction block. Looks like it's gonna connect. Um, <coughs> sorry, no, nothing off of this junction block. Look, it looks like it's gonna connect up to the carburetor. So I'll just pop this guy out. That's quite satisfying. And then we're gonna take the, uh, hoses out of this clip and some other stuff out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, so here's a scoop. That screw that sits right here behind whatever this electronic thing is uh, holds in both that bracket for that series of vacuum diaphragms and it holds in the bracket for that series of, of wires or, or vacuum lines as they were as well. Uh, maybe they're just wires. I don't know. Anyhow, I took that screw out and I'm going to have a hell of a time getting it back in until I pull this uh, 
little solenoid thing out, so I think I'm going to do that next. Sorry, mates. It's quite chilly out. Uh, so there's, there's three long screws. Uh, one, two, and three. That hold in this electronically operated... Who's going to watch it? I'm trying to break. Probably a part you can't find anymore. Christ. Anyhow, I'm going to be real delicate with a pair of uh, pliers and try to get this charcoal canister line off. Wish me luck. Alright, so the next thing that you're going to want to do is pinpoint where this connector's at. It's a big green fucker down here. Once these cluster of three, just trace this red wire down to its connector. and That's the one, then loosen off the, uh, the tie holding it on. And get the damn thing off. Well, I can't do it one-handed, but you know, it's there in spirit. This connector and lines being unplugged, I can put this uh, charcoal canister regulator back into the carburetor. Right in there. So I don't lose it or break it. And, well, I might want to wait on that, actually. Point being that these two nuts are going to be difficult to get off. Uh, yeah, you gotta be very careful when breaking loose. I've found several on this side that are made out of plastic. So don't crush on them too hard or you will, you will break them. And you get to buy yourself a Weber 3236. Now just know that whenever you're trying to take these uh, infernal goddamn vacuum lines off, that uh, maybe these aren't made of plastic. I think they're actually made of steel because they definitely would have crushed them. But either way, these things are 37 years old. Uh, <coughs> or will be 37 years old. So they need replaced. Like, don't expect to do this carburetor rebuild without just taking it for granted that you're going to replace your, your 40 year old vacuum lines. They're, they're 20, beyond, 20 years beyond their, their service life. Uh, just. If you're doing it this far, you should replace your vacuum lines. Otherwise, you're going to start leaks. Oh, God bless. And I think the body of the carburetor is actually connected down below this vacuum. Screw off. Below this vacuum line. And yeah, so this PCV hose is going to have to come off. This guy, sorry. Good Lord. Well, anyways, it connects from here and goes down in there. You can't see it because my phone's a piece of shit. And once those are all disconnected, we should be able to unbolt the carburetor. I think we're also going to have to disconnect these two bolts, because those are going to be holding the throttle linkage to the carburetor, to the engine block. Alright, ladies and gents, so the, there's, a, there's a bolt going all the way through here. you got to have a 12mm underneath and a 12mm up top. And crack them loose. And might I say, it's just the most pain in the ass fucking thing. God oh, damn you, Toyota. Ladies and gents, I consider it a magnet of extending nature of maximum importance for getting these two nuts off. The uh, driver's side of the carburetor. Now I think it should just lift off. Hmm. Houston, we're ready for lift off. <coughs> uh. Let's see. Alright, carburetor's off. Hooray! Now you get to deal with this fucking mess. Well. Ah, uh, thanks for dripping gasoline all over my battery carburetor. That's just awesome. I will say it's relatively simple, but when it's cold, mother of mercy, it's not a fun job. Most of all the tools that I used, okay, well I got a 3 inch and a 6 inch extension, I got a 12 millimeter 3 8 socket, these are all 3 8 tools, I got a 10 millimeter socket, 3 8 ratchet, one 12 millimeter box hand or combination wrench, and I used another 12 millimeter, this guy, right here, I used three different sets of pliers, uh, vacuum houses, it's important to have one for bigger hoses, a pair of bent needle nose, and a pair of straight. you can, uh, tape over the ends to prevent them from damaging your vacuum lines, and I use this as a hammer. That is all you need to get it off, ladies and gentlemen. And a magnet. Wait a second. Where's the magnet? Oh, there's the magnet coming in strong. 
maybe the most important for not losing things. A pipe and some rags and a service manual and a coffee mug. Yeah. Right, next thing you're going to want to do is remove this Phillips screw. And then that will remove your power piston and spring assembly. Take that screw out with it. I think it also wants you to remove pivot pin and flute with the needle valve. <sighs> oh, that's the needle valve attached to it. There we go, that controls the amount of fuel let into the carburetor bowl. <laughs> bowl. Now this is the vent control solenoid. And it says to remove it, mainly so you can replace the gasket um, on the air horn body. Other than that, down in here are your actual throttle plates. Yeah, you can see them down in there. Uh, main, secondary. That up there is your, your choke assembly, those are your choke plates, your choke breaker on the back. I finally figured out what it was called. Uh, we're going to see if we can't rejet this carburetor appropriately. All right, now these faggots are wanting you to use the special service tool 09922-00010 to remove the slow jet, which is right here. But instead, I got an adjustable wrench, and it's not in there terribly tight, so if you're careful, you can unscrew it. Right, take that out of there, and it's probably going to be a spring underneath it or something's going to try and shoot up and kill me and lose all the parts. And looks like the slow jet. So I'm going to start a new register of the parts going here so I don't mix and match stuff. The next it's going to want to move the power valve with the jet part number two. Power valve. It's in the carburetor bowl. Uh, it's got a little keeper and a little valve thing in there, a little spring retainer in there. All right, I gotta figure this out. You know, you're learning with me. Uh, yeah, so you gotta hold the shaft steady and you gotta rotate that little uh, top plate around 90 degrees, clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever direction it goes, and it'll pop off. Then you can move the power valve. All right, never mind, I'm fucking retarded. Uh, I, I don't think I have a deep well socket in the house. I might have to go up to my truck and grab one, but there's a 10 millimeter down in there. I'm gonna see if I can't get my uh, 10 millimeter shitty wrench on it and fuck some stuff up. Uh, must the head up anyhow, but uh, power valve probably comes out that way instead of removing that little keeper on top. What do you bet? Well, fucking course, Toyota, you make me find a deep well 9mm socket. Cunts. Anyhow, I'm sure your rack is going the right direction. She's nice and warm from sitting outside. Please clap. Live your life according to Dan Quayle. The next thing I did was I used a pick underneath of this and pulled out the metering needle guide. And the next thing I'm going to have to do is get down in there, I think, with some sort of screwdriver or something and get that jet out. Unfortunately, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but hopefully it comes out without a fight. Well, I don't know how I'm going to get these two jets out in there. Fuck, this phone is shitty. Uh, jet right there in front of my finger and a jet down in that hole. Then there's these two, uh, there's a copper washer and a rubber o-ring and they fell out of somewhere and I have no idea where that was so that's cool. You know what, thanks carburetor. Just buy a fucking Weber 3236 and say fuck it. <clears throat> oh yeah, and you're going to want to take your 14 millimeter wrench and, and loosen this plug. Right here, this big one. But, uh, 
should be loose now. Hopefully nothing flies out. Nope, there's a washer on the back of it though. Take note of that. Set that guy off the side. I don't know. I might have to bring this by a shop or something and get uh, tools coming out of that. And after you can't get these fucking jets out, the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the acceleration pump. This little cam that rides along this eccentric, I think. Yeah, it rides along here. Mm. Thanks, pump. Oh no, she's squirting. She is definitely squirting. I think the accelerator pump's fine. I don't know what the fuck's up with the truck. I'm gonna do 30 miles an hour with the pass because I'm a 37 year old piece of shit. Fucking truck. I had it running good for a day and a half. Day and a half, and I've owned it for a year almost. It'll be a year come March. It's like, fuck me. 10 miles to the gallon, gutless ass goddamn piece of shit. I love the truck, but it's like a member of the family. You don't always like who you love. And I don't like the truck. It's evil and cruel and hateful and spiteful. It knows that it's not a 79 to 81 long box like I really, really want. Although it's the correct color of both interior and out. I just wish it was about five years older because I like the way they look so much better. I really don't like the boxy body style. I'm sorry. I just... Come on. Things in nature aren't ever boxy. But perhaps I'm a purist for some something, some ideal that doesn't actually exist. Yeah, just open flames and fucking high voltage stuff and a space heater going. And... <sighs> reeks like gasoline in here. It just reeks. I'm going to open the window and leave the door shut before I go to bed for about three hours tonight. And I'm going to have to whack this accelerator pump or something to get it loose. Yep. There's an auxiliary acceleration pump on the side of this here carburetor body. Looks like it's also a Phillips head piece of shit. I take those loose and take this off. This is my hammer, by the way. It worked great, except for that little hole in the back. But they're right here. It's great for smacking. Okay, right here. Yeah. I'll take a pair of pliers. The longest pair of fucking needle nose pliers I own. Remove that tiny little cotter pin. And then you're gonna remove this linkage from the idle up diaphragm. And then I'm gonna take these two screws in the back off of it and this linkage. Fuck, I hate them. Fucking 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 hate it. Fucking hate it. It's just making life more complicated, you know what I mean? You know what I fucking mean? Let us see. This. There's a lot of linkages and stuff in here. It makes you wonder. The idle up linkage is a cunt as well, because of course it is. Fiddly ass motherfucking Toyota 80s parts. Um, so what you're going to want to do is take a 10mm combination wrench, just like the, the Schittsburg, and you're going to loosen this off like a turn and a half to three turns. Don't, don't do any more. Yeah, I don't want these springs coming unloaded and fucking all my linkages just go everywhere. Um, then you can jimmy this around because this guy is going to be what's in your way. And then you can get this off of its peg right there. Set that aside. Uh, I love diaphragm. It says to remove the choke opener. And separate the body and the flange. So, here's to hoping that we can separate the body and the flange without uh, having to take the jets out. Okay, I removed this diaphragm. I don't know what the hell that is, but this is your choke opener. I left that in the truck. So, uh, or your di idle up diaphragm. So, I'm actually going to put that guy back on and tighten this back down since I don't need to take it off. Now, wait a second. This, cho this is the choke opener. So, I, I actually need it off. God bless, I... Ugh. They don't teach you anything. Fucking... ATV guy goes ripping around here at all hours of the night. Come by my window at 3am, I wanna shoot you from a shotgun. Shut up, retard. 
Alright, we're, we're undoing the screws again. I can get it out. I didn't tighten it back down. See, this is what's really impeding. It's this nut not having enough clearance. I watched No Country for Old Men the other night. Good movie. But uh, what's the moral? You know, people never fucking change. Is that the moral? I mean, I don't remember a lot of it because it's baked, but... I don't know. It wasn't a personal favorite. It was a very well shot movie, but I did. I don't know. I quite liked a couple of Robert Eggers films. Seen with a couple of buddies. Uh, the Witch, or The Fitch, and. Uh, fuck, what's the other one? I don't think he had a hand in The Lighthouse, but. Uh, no. The Lighthouse was a Robert Eggers film, right? And then uh, Ghost Story was... Oh, I've been huffing gas for too long all day. Can't, uh... Can't remember. Hopefully the Citrusolve is, uh... Melted. <laughs> I want to be lit so I can actually clean this up and make the room smell good. Candles are helping immensely. The window open is quite cold. Well, now that my marijuana and gasoline fueled brain has been uh, properly scintillated, I used the number two flathead screwdriver to remove the three screws holding the flange to the body of the carburetor. And there's going to be washers under each. You're going to want to pick those up and don't lose them. One. Van nipple. Ah, ah, ah. Right, lock washer, fuck you. Two nipple. Ah, ah, ah. Three nipple. Ah, ah. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> and uh, I'm going to have to get uh, some sort of smacking device and separate this flange from the carburetor body. Well, the moral of that fucking story is that uh, you can use a bigger hammer. Stuck together piece of shit. Now I get to figure out how to take the jets out. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow. I'm gonna put the uh, stink bits back in the uh, box, box up all my tools, and reassemble the room, I guess. It's a goddamn mess. A stinky one at that. But that being said, I did tighten down that, that uh, bolt again so I could at least you know, just not forget about it. Um, you know what? You're staying down in there. You are staying in there. Stop that. Uh, you know what? I think that's it. Separate the body and flange. A general cleaning procedure. Uh, it's 6.05, so I'm going to start cleaning up now so I can vent the fucking room out without it just... Well, you know what? Everybody always wants a tool list, so we're going to start going, uh, well, 14, 12, 10 combination wrench, good flashlight, combination pick, uh, long, thin screwdriver, thin tip, thick tip flathead as well, Phillips, magnet, number two Phillips, pair of pliers, needle nose, uh, thin, thin screwdriver, I used a quarter inch socket in the deep well mine. You can use whatever you want. I sharpened my razor blade because I'm a cunt and won't buy them. And a uh, uh, adjustable wrench, monkey wrench, for smacking and other purposes. That should be about it. Mm, yes, 1960s carpet.